the tribers welcome back to the channel um i see the tribe the dentist tribe i see y'all wanted me to do this video on why chicago is so dangerous and so notorious right and honestly to be honest with you all i didn't want to make this video right because i'm like I really just, it's just, it's, it's so crazy, but I mean, I got to release the information to you guys, because you guys, you keep emailing me, and everybody's like, it's just a topic, everybody wants to know, okay, if you haven't, this is for, I made this video, because a lot of people are on the outside looking in, and they don't know why Chicago is so dangerous and so notorious, but they know, like, every gang starts from, started from Chicago, every, even Al Capone, every every criminal organization started from Chicago. You know, you hear about all these protests, riots, and all this chaos always about Chicago, Chicago, this, Chicago, that. But they don't understand why, and they don't know why everyone from Chicago is so alert and so aware and operates different in different states, right? And people don't want they don't know why but they want to know like what's going on like why is the gang activity like that why is the streets so like chaotic and violent and all that right so let's get into it okay if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel right and this video is for everybody who keep emailing me from the outside looking in because they say it fascinates them whatever but they really want more understanding of why chicago is how it is right and how it got to that right Okay, if you're not from Chicago, then you wouldn't understand really why, but, like, I'll break it down to you, okay? I didn't want to do this video, but I'm going to do it for all my audience, because you guys have, this has been a demanded video by me, so I have to do it, right? Rule one, the first thing, right, that you have to understand is that the population of Chicago is very huge, right? And you have to look at it like this. Whatever city you're in, if you're not in Chicago or New York, then you have to remember that it takes 66 cities of your city to make one community the size of Chicago, right? So, it'll take 66 of your cities to make one community of Chicago. You have to remember that. Just remember that, right? There's a very, very important factor that you need to remember. And the reason why is because of this. When you see in Chicago there's 100 people on one corner, almost every other block, every block, it's like, you look, you're like, whoa, it's 100 people on that corner. I would hate to have to walk past from this and that, right? But what you fail to realize is that we all grew up with each other. We all know each other. Like, I know everyone's grandmother. I know their great-grandmother. They know their parents and stuff know me by my first and last name. They know my whole family. Like, with Chicago, it's more of a history thing. And, like, you like, all of these gang wars is going on. What's up with that? You know, why is it like that? Okay. All of the gang wars that's going on in Chicago, they were going on before we were born. Okay? So... When we were born, we were into it with the people that our fathers and grandfathers' families was into it with. So it's not like, oh, he likes this color, we don't like him. Like, everybody on the outside looks in. No, it's not like that. It's like, this is what it's like. Those dudes from over there, they killed my cousin 15 years ago, okay? And it's never going to stop. That's why Chicago is like it is. It's not about colors. Like, everybody like, oh, it's because he wear yellow, he's a king, they banging on that, blue because of that. Maybe other cities and states that you're in, it's like that, but Chicago is more than just a color. They don't even, we don't even care about no colors. Nobody, nobody even cares about colors no more. Chicago isn't a color-based city when it comes to the gangs. They don't care about that. You know what they care about? They care about your face. If they don't know you, there's problems, you know? And it's real bad, and Chicago really wasn't always that bad when I was growing up. When it got, when did it start to get bad is when I was like, well, it was getting bad when I was like 16. And then like 10 years after that, it really, really got bad. It got bad when Chicago really, really got bad is when they started stopping cars. And they be like, you know, like, I'm serious. Like, Chicago, you cannot, do not drive down the wrong block if you're not from Chicago. Stay on busy streets, please, for your safety. Stay on busy streets because I've done drove down blocks the wrong, at, like, just riding, trying to get to another location, right? And I had people run out in the middle of the street with big old guns, like big, big, big guns, right? And stop my car. Luckily, and that happened a couple times to me, right? But luckily, I had someone in the vehicle with me who knew the people who were stopping it, and so they didn't kill me, right? So it's like that, right? But um, that violence started to become a natural, normal thing to us in Chicago. It had started to become natural, and normal, like, and I know that wasn't normal, and I knew it when it was happening. Like, this is not normal. Them stopping every vehicle that comes through that block if they don't know you, that is 
definitely not normal. Me having to walk past 100 people just to get to Wendy's to get me a hamburger, this is not normal either. But eventually we got used to it. You get used to it. You know what I'm saying? And with the gang violence, why is it so, like, bad in Chicago? It's because it's different than any other state. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that, right? In Chicago, they don't care if they shoot you, the person that started the trouble. What they care about in Chicago is if they shoot a person that hangs with you or if they get you. Other cities, you know, they're like, I just got to catch him. I just got to get him. Chicago's not like that. They get mad and angry. They'll go over to your neighborhood where they know everyone in that community is that same same gang or, or gang affiliated. And they'll shoot anybody out there. And that's good for them. They catch people at restaurants. That's a restaurant in that neighborhood. That's that community. And that's that gang's community. They'll shoot anyone there less. And they're good like that. And it goes back and forth. They've been doing that for years. Like, this gang might shoot up their restaurant. The other gang go back and shoot up their restaurant. Just, you see what I'm saying? And then, Chicago's really, really bad also because the police aren't looked at how you guys look at it from different states. Chicago, they don't look at it like that. In Chicago, the police literally gangbang. Like, like a regular gang does, bro, they pull up on black people and they'll tell you it's CPD, you know, and they'll drop your gang set. Whatever neighborhood you're in, the police officers will pull up and they'll gangbang with their hands and all that and drop it. And they rep CPD, Chicago Police Department, right? And that's not even just where it stops at. When you get in Cook County, I've never went to Cook County without seeing like four or five people get beat up as soon as I come in here. And each time you go in Cook County, I don't care if it's for a parking ticket, driving ticket, you're going to see like at least five to ten people get slapped by the police officers as soon as you get in there. And I'm talking about they really beating them up. And, and we'll beat them up. And you know what? It's like because they'll give you an option like, if you guys got anything illegal, any drugs, throw it, throw it away, right? So everybody will throw all the drugs they had on them off, right? On the floor, you see a whole floor full of number drugs right and insight and booking right and there's always one stupid person who wants to try to pick it up and sneak it back to the division or i don't know where you're from they may call it a tank they may call it a dorm whatever they call it, call it your lockup facility but in chicago they call it a division right so now look oh someone's going to try to pick it up and if then when officers come back and catch him they're going to beat him in front of all of us right then after they beat him right they're going to make us one time they made us like stand with our hands out with our knees squatted for four hours bro and it was torture from what he had did, the guy that picked up the, the bags of drugs that were thrown on the floor and tried to sneak it back up to the division. They had all of us punished. So then when he did make it upstairs, he got stabbed. You see what I'm saying? And it's like that. Um, Chicago's bad too because like a lot of people don't talk in Chicago. They do a lot of violent stuff to you in Chicago. Not all neighborhoods are like that, okay? But like if you're in Inglewood community or Roseland community, those are the two worst neighborhoods in the United States of America. And trust me, I know why. I've seen it firsthand. If you're not from there, do not go there. Anybody tell you, oh, you can just ride through Chicago like that? They don't love you. You can just ride through Chicago like that if you stay in a downtown area. I'm going to tell you right now, for all you outsiders who've been looking in, you can do it in a downtown area, but do not leave the outskirts. Even Be careful even downtown now, too. You good in the Gold Coast? Cause we got our, it's like different ju jurisdictions in Chicago, you know, that we, different communities. Cause it's 66 different communities in Chicago to make the city of Chicago. That's why it's so dangerous because the population is so huge. It's 66 times whatever city you're living in right now. If you're not in New York. So you're dealing with a big population and those are more thoughts. And these people are very, very dangerous. You know, there's a lot of people thinking of a way to harm you and hurt you. Because you gotta remember, they've been harmed and hurt and shot at and lost people, so they have to adapt to a way to counter that, I'm guessing. You see what I'm saying? Now, some people grow out of that mentality and they do positive. Like, I've seen a lot of people that I grew up with from my neighborhood, Inglewood in Chicago, you know. The same neighborhood where Lil Dirk's from, all the rest of the, you know, you know, we all from that community, you know what I'm saying? Well, some of them from, yeah, yeah, some of you know, but Chicago, right? So dig, right? Um, I think, well, no, I was going to tell you guys, I just heard a little distraction, whatever, right? Now. But I think, like, a lot of people made it out of Chicago, made it out of Chicago because it was so rough. And if you can make it out of Chicago, you can make it anywhere, right? But, like, I, like, I literally have friends from Inglewood that are now pastors, ministers, pastors, and real heavily involved in the church. I got a lot of uh, people that I know who are um, friends that grew up with their sincere Muslims. You know, I got 
A lot of friends I grew up with in Chicago that are Jehovah Witnesses. Now, there's a lot of people I grew up with that changed their life. You know, despite growing up with all this shooting every day, like, I literally grew up with, like, getting pushed to the floor because it was so many shots coming from the corner that that the older people didn't want me to get shot. You know what I'm saying? So I'm outside playing as a kid. And I always was, I remember always getting pushed down. And I knew who was doing the shooting, you know, because they used to run our neighborhood. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, but when they get angry, they just shoot our whole block up. And nobody can say nothing and do nothing to these people because they'll just shoot anybody, you know. And it was just like, growing up to that and watching that, it was just like growing up under Al Capone umbrella. And so those behaviors were normal to people who live in Chicago. Like, we, we expect that. Oh, he's got, oh, he got mad. Oh, he's going to shoot the whole block up. Everybody stay in the house. Do not go outside. Keep all the kids in the house. You know, it became normal. And I knew something was wrong with that. And I knew that wasn't normal. But that's how we grew up, you know. And then, Chicago was different because it was like, a lot of our parents were on drugs and had bad, bad drug habits, because cocaine had hit real, real hard, right? And so, the older gang leaders, they had all the money because they were selling all our parents to drugs, right? And what they were doing was, they were taking care of us, though. Like, our mom and I was doing all these drugs and stuff, but moms and dads were doing all these drugs and stuff, right? But the leaders of the gangs... We're using that money to take care of us. And we was the kids, you know what I'm saying? But in return of that, they gained our loyalty. So that generation that came up after our parents was more of a, uh, how would you say it? More of a, we looked up to the, all the gang leaders, okay? And we were loyal to all the gang leaders, right? I'm just telling you the truth. I don't, you know, I'm not going to lie to you guys, you know what I'm saying? And tell you, oh, Chicago was just so beautiful growing up in it. And it was, no, I'm telling you, it was very dangerous, okay? It was very structured. It was very segregated, okay? And you can lose your life at any minute if you don't know certain people. Period. Now, I went to different states and I had noticed as I had got older, right? When I got in my twenties, I know. And I start when I got in my twenties, I was going to different states, and I had noticed that it wasn't it wasn't like that in different states. It wasn't someone on the corner always watching out for the police, and the person with the drugs was in the middle of the block. The blocks was using walkie talkies, and it wasn't structured like Chicago it was so structured. You see what I'm saying? So I had noticed that, and I'm like, wow, life is so relaxed in different states, and like, there ain't even I don't have to walk past a hundred people to get to the restaurant or the gas station to get some food it was like it was so relaxing seeing a different more laid-back environment you see what I'm saying and Chicago was real treacherous you know the population is real high but Chicago is real it could get real treacherous it was years where it was real treacherous where it was like wow they're back hanging people like slavery days wow you know wow they killed the guy and left a condom wrapper in his mouth oh my god Oh my God, they cut a guy's fingers off. You know, Chicago start to get treacherous and treacherous and treacherous and treacherous, you know, but I had noticed that in other cities, it wasn't like that. The gangs weren't like that. And I think the gangs weren't like that in different cities because they didn't have mob ties and stuff like that. Like, you know, because we grew up in Chicago under Al Capone. So I think in other cities, by them not having that mentality, like forced upon them from like the 70s and 80s movement, so that the generations after that would move like that and operate like that. I think that's why other states and cities wasn't like that. And I used to always sit back and think and wonder, like, what is it going to take to change this city? You know, what is it going to take to change Chicago? What is it going to take to make Chicago better? You know, and I had came to a conclusion that it was going to take everybody. Total unity. It was going to take all the bad situations we grew up we grew up to, because we wasn't, like, we, I didn't have a choice of things that I seen growing up or none of that. I just grew up when I was a kid. I couldn't support myself and just decide to move here and this and that. How would I pay rent to live there? You see what I'm saying? So it was just, I was just stuck dealing with all this. But I was like, how can I make Chicago better? And I was like, you know what, we need unity, you know. And I had started, like, reaching out to people from all over Chicago. And it was so crazy because, like, Sometimes I almost got hurt. A lot of times I did almost get harmed. From going to people in neighborhoods that I didn't know, that I mean that they didn't know me, there were always people talking about, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. What are you doing over here? Who do you know? And it was like, I had to tell them who I knew, and it was always a positive person, and I was okay, but, you know, it was just different. I just felt like, I, I knew it was going to be changed, but I started uh, having unity with other people, 
and dealing with people in Chicago. And then things started coming together and going for the right cause because I started surrounding myself around people that were like-minded, that wanted positive change and positive outcome. So I started building out on that, but like as for overall normal, living in a community of Inglewood in Chicago or the community of Roseland in Chicago, you're going to see a lot of murders, you're going to see a lot of shooting, you're going to see a lot of fights every single day. There's people in those neighborhoods and in, in, in those neighbor communities that every day they're known for just shooting someone. That's just their normal thing. He's going to shoot. That's what he does. God wants to just beat people up every single day, never miss a day of it. I'm talking about, and they love doing that. And I noticed from other states and cities, there wasn't people like that, you know. And so that's another reason why Chicago is so bad, you know. It's, it's the, I don't know, Chicago is getting better, and it's evolving better, but, you know, I just, I didn't, you know, I just, from people, everybody bagged me, give you this video from the outside looking in, and I did it, you know, to give you more of a clear comprehension of why Chicago is so dangerously notorious, and why it's so bad now today. It didn't just happen overnight. This has been going on before we were even born. I love you guys. Um, if you got any value or learned something from this channel, please subscribe and make sure that you smash that like button. But um, yeah, stay tuned to the channel and I'll keep educating you guys. Just drop in the comment section however you feel about the situation, uh, any ideas about the situation, and any videos you want me to cover. Drop.